state officials are warning they face a daunting, near impossible task of rebuilding their health care systems from the ground up in just two years under the GOP's latest Obamacare repeal plan. It's a recipe for chaos, say those officials, who fear the unforgiving timeline and minimal federal assistance could result in insurance market collapses that force millions of residents to lose coverage. When you do it this fast and it's rushed, you're going to blow it, said Matt Solo, executive director of the Bipartisan National Association of Medicaid Directors. In the vast majority of states, you couldn't pull this off. It's just not realistic. The last-ditch repeal plan from Senators Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy would eliminate Obamacare's insurance subsidies and Medicaid expansion and replace the funding with block grants shared among states beginning in 2020. Governors and state legislatures would be charged with designing coverage schemes for the 27 million people insured through private Obamacare plans or Medicaid expansion, with as much as $107 billion less over a decade, according to estimates. That's on top of hundreds of billions of dollars in cuts the bill, H.R. 1628, 115, makes to the traditional Medicaid program which would be transformed from an open-ended entitlement into a budgeted program. Ten Republican governors, mostly from Medicaid expansion states, have objected to a plan that could cost them billions of dollars. Health insurers, who largely remained neutral throughout the GOP's months-long repeal effort, condemned Graham Cassidy unworkable and impossible. The Board of Medicaid Directors issued a searing indictment of the plan, a rare rebuke from a group that represents states ranging from deep red Texas to blue as they come California. Honestly, I am really struggling to figure out how we would respond, said Teresa Miller Pennsylvania's acting Secretary of Human Services, at the Senate Sloan hearing on the repeal plan Monday afternoon. Miller testified that it's highly unlikely Pennsylvania would be able to build a functioning insurance marketplaces by the bill's 2020 deadline. The Grand Cassidy plan, which as of Monday was still struggling to earn enough Republican support, would result in funding cuts to 35 states, particularly those that had the greatest success enrolling people under Obamacare according an analysis from the Kaiser Family Foundation. The states that would receive more funding are predominantly those that resisted Obamacare and may lack the healthcare expertise, and desire, to build new coverage systems. A revised version of the bill released Monday morning offers new funding for states represented by GOP senators skeptical of the effort, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Susan Collins of Maine, John McCain of Arizona, and Rand Paul of Kentucky. But their states would still see overall funding cuts, and none of the holdouts have been swayed by the changes ahead of a September 30 deadline to pass a repeal bill with just GOP votes. Republican lawmakers supporting Graham Cassidy have brushed off concerns about abruptly shifting responsibility for the nation's health care system to the states, most of which, unlike the federal government, are constrained by requirements to balance their budgets each year. I have complete confidence in, state, policymakers that they can come up with plans, that they know the state better than the federal government does, said Senator John Kennedy, our law, whose home state expanded Medicaid to more than 400,000 poor adults last year. The Senate plan would allow states to scrap many of Obamacare's insurance regulations and protections that Republican critics say drive up the cost of insurance, in hopes of winning over conservative Senators Ted Cruz and Mike Lee. However, the plan would give states limited time to solve the politically fraught policy dilemmas that have stumped congressional Republicans for years such as how to ensure affordable coverage for people with expensive medical conditions. State legislatures typically meet only a few months each year, and gubernatorial elections in 36 states next year could slow efforts to develop new health care plans. That means newly elected governors could have less than a year to develop, pass and implement a statewide insurance system. If a state fails to agree on a plan by 2020, it would lose out on all federal block grant funding for the year, leaving low-income residents without government aid to obtain coverage. Though the latest bill revisions give some states, including Alaska, 
more money to cover people, it doesn't provide additional financial help to study and set up new health care systems. The plan designates just $2 billion to help states implement new systems over two years. That's about half the time and federal money spent on the run-up to the Obamacare marketplace's disastrous debut in fall 2013. Texas, which has the nation's highest uninsured rate, is expected to be the big 